Bond markets, how are they interpreting the data? Simon Michel from FIG is live. Simon, warm well, welcome to the show. Uh, your thoughts uh, in, in two respects. Uh, looking at the 240, 245 level on the US 10 year, just to, as we inch towards something on tax or otherwise from Trump, but also Aussie yields, uh, how have they fared in the last you know, few hours? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Carson. Well, uh, quite steady over in the US, really. Well, we saw a, a bit of a kick up in Aussie yields, around four basis points right across the curve. We haven't seen that in the US. They're really steady. The 10 year really hasn't moved at all. So uh, I think they're really awaiting this package that we're likely to see. And, uh, and I think your comments around uh, the, de the detail is what bond markets yeah. are going to be looking for. We've got a real divergence of uh, the yield curve over in the US and the equity market, which just keeps hitting new highs and at some point these have got to sort of realign so uh, you know uh, the devil in the detail um, could start to see some uh, adjustment of one of those two markets. And on the long uh, bond yields sort of coming back from their elevated positions as well is that sort of reflecting recent data in the US uh, by which I mean say in the last week things are not looking as robust as they were the previous week. Look, I think you're right on with that, absolutely. I mean, we've seen the US 30-day rate, for example, it's 30-year rate, I should say, up around 3.22%. It's now down under 3%. So, you know, our market isn't even at the peaks we've seen post-Trump or, or, or earlier this year. Um, about a quarter percent below that, uh, both in US and Aussie yields. So, you know, again, that's about this divergence of markets. Bond market's just not buying into this uh, additional growth, this additional inflation mm. that these policies suggest we could see. Uh, and I think you're certainly seeing that reflected in the equity markets where, you know, speculation around a drop in the corporate tax rate could certainly improve earnings of a lot of those companies. That seems to be built in to the equity market, certainly not in our bond market. What do we make of the 65% chance of a June rate hike then in the US? It was 34% this time last week. Absolutely. And I think, again, uh, you know, you've seen uh, the future start to build in uh, higher rates, but I don't think you've, start, you've seen an increase in the rate of increases. So, you know, I think quite possibly we could see that June uh, market move, but, you know, that would probably offset a move around September or December. So, you know, it's really interesting and, and quite volatile as well. I mean, if you have a look at that 10-year rate, you have a look at our Aussie dollar, you know, we are starting to see a lot more volatility come into the, the market as well. Then again, the US dollar has fallen a percent since the weekend. It was down again overnight. So what is that telling you? Well, absolutely, that's right. And I think right, what you're seeing there is obviously, you know, a bit of a, a, bit of a slowdown. Uh, obviously not as much money hitting the US. Um, you know, th their rates have been pretty steady uh, while other rates have been moving up. So you could start to see some movement of uh, investors' funds out of uh, US Treasuries into some of those other uh, sovereign bonds that provide a significant higher rate of return, and, such as the Aussie. And, and also, look, about, look at the euro, uh, up about six cents of a percent. You know, this is going to be a headache for Draghi meeting as, as a central bank and not liking the support perversely for the euro at a time like this you still uh, you know you, you'd ideally want further weakness not um, ele you know elevated levels that's exactly right because what he wants to do is he wants to start preparing the, the EU for you know normalization um, you know they want to pull back on the bond buying um, and they don't really want to see uh, movements in US rates impacting on uh, their yields over there, but that's exactly what we're seeing at the moment. What's Kuroda likely to do if we whip down to Japan this week? Because they're in huddle as well. In just a few hours' time, the shutters will go up at the BOJ, uh, light in on, on mystery to that extent. Uh, will there be any change to the status quo? Look, I'd be surprised if we see the change in status quo. I think it'll be about just re-accentuating that message uh, of support in the uh, economy there. I think they really want to see how this US p plays out. I mean, as, as we've spoken, it is impacting on other global yields and uh, currencies as well. So really, I think, you know, if you're a central banker at the moment, um, you're sort of sitting in the back seat and uh, you want to sort of see how this plays out before you make any significant adjustments to your monetary policy and I think that's the problem drag is in at the moment as you mentioned. Yeah, meanwhile dollar yen makes a run for 112 without much in the way of stopping it. Uh, thank mm. you as always, appreciate it. Thank you Carson. There you have it, uh, of course, uh, from FIG, Simon Mitchell.